good evening to all welcome to the easter sunday service today is resurrection sunday last friday we enjoyed our good friday service what is the meaning of good friday it means remembering the crucifixion and death of christ for our sin what one thing we wanted to remember christianity is not finishing by crucifixion of christ death of christ today we celebrating we enjoying the easter sunday resurrected sunday after jesus death he resurrected by the holy spirit so i wanted to encourage you you know this season is not good for us so many people are facing lot of problems lot of crisis lot of struggles somebody is sick somebody is facing their you know finance problems um the job security some other problems we may married what will happen we may stick with the same situation no i wanted to encourage you the word of god is saying the power of the holy spirit resurrected jesus from the death so word of god also giving the assurance to us the same power of the holy spirit the same spirit of god is in us so even though we facing the day like a good friday the day like a crisis problems sick or other difficulties remember and believe it the holy spirit is in us the power of the holy spirit we going to come out from this situation we going to celebrate our victory with the power of holy spirit believe it and we going to worship this sunday we going to celebrate resurrection of jesus christ that is our hope that is our everything so come together worship together enjoy the presence of the lord god bless you
Jesus when I met you, yeah, yeah. you called my name. together. I needed rescue. I needed rescue. My sin was worthy. The chains break at the weight of your glory. I needed shelter. I was an orphan. Now you call me a citizen of heaven. When I was broken, you were my healing. Now your love is the end. Jesus. Should we just sing that chorus again? He called my name and I ran out of that grave. Out of the darkness into your glorious day. You called my Oh, yeah. 
Set me free, hallelujah. 
again. Then came the morning that sealed the promise. Your very body began to break. Out of the silence, the roaring lion declared the rain has no claim on me. Jesus, God. Welcome to our online service. Here are a few things that come in your way. So just to let everyone know, C Groups are still running. This is a great way for you to fellowship and stay connected still. C Groups this week will be meeting on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday and Saturday over on the Zoom app. So make sure you speak to your C Group leader or email Pastor Alex for more information. If you would like to stay updated with all that's going on here at The Lighthouse by receiving weekly emails and texts, then simply email your information to the email here on the screen and someone will get you connected. So church, that's all for this week. I hope you all have an amazing Easter. Make sure to stay safe and enjoy the rest of the service. Hello everyone. Welcome to the no Lighthouse North online service. We really hope that you are all keeping well and safe. At this time, we have so many restrictions on what we can do and what we cannot do. But there's one thing that we are not restricted of, that is to pray and seek God's face, because only God can heal this land of this pandemic. The word says in 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14, that if my people called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, I will hear from heaven and forgive their sin and heal their land. And that's the promise from Lord. And if we, if we need God to come and heal this land, we need to seek his face. In order to do this, the Lighthouse North has organized a chain fasting and prayer where one or a few of us can can join together in fasting and praying and choose a day from the week that they want to join. And we do this every day of the week. In order to fast, you can fast either the breakfast, the lunch or the dinner or however you want you wish to do it. But we want you to stick to one day so that you can do it every week until this pandemic ends. We want lots of people to join. We want many of you to join so that there is an army of people praying and seeking God's face for this land and interceding and standing in the gap for this land. We can pray for the, the country, for the church, for the NHS staff and all the frontline workers and the key workers, for the globe in general as well. We, we can set aside at least an hour to do this and seek his face. And I'm sure that God is going to come and heal this land. Let us stand together in unity and let us be encouraged to join in this prayer. If you want to join in this chain prayer, please contact Pastor Reggie if you have his number. If not, call the Lighthouse office or message in the Facebook and we can get in touch with you and you can join us. Thank you for joining and have a great week ahead. Hi everyone, I hope you're all keeping well. Just to remind you, there are three C groups in Presswich, Moston and Middleton are now meeting online through an app called Zoom. Why not download Zoom and come and join us? We might be locked down 
but you're not locked out. Let's stay connected. See you soon. Bye for now. 50% of us give our offering in person. We can't do that now, but if you still want to give and are able, let me give you three simple ways. Number one is a direct payment from your bank account. This is easy to do from your online bank or smartphone app. Simply set the Lighthouse up as a payee using the name Lighthouse Christian Center and the sort code and account number on screen. Don't worry if you miss it, we'll put it on again at the end of the stream. Once this is done, you can send a one-off or regular payment. It's simple, fast and free. The second way to give is to use the Give It app. This is available in your app stores. Just download and register. Then to give, you just need to set an amount and scan the QR code on screen or search for the Lighthouse Manchester in the lists. There is a small fee we have to pay when you use this method. The third way is to simply send us a check in the post. Make the check payable to the Lighthouse Christian Centre and send it to the Lighthouse, 12 Centenary Park, Coronet Way, M50 1RE. Yeah.
Hi there, I'd love us all to join together this morning to just pray for our nation, to pray for our political leaders, and to pray for those people who have been personally and directly affected by the virus. And you may know people yourself um, who are being affected by this, most of us do by now. So I want us to lift up our voice before the Lord. Father, we just pray for our country. We pray for our nation at this time, and we pray for the nations of the world, Lord, suffering underneath this, this terrible uh, COVID-19 virus. Father, we pray in Jesus' name that, Lord, you will give wisdom to our political leaders, that you will give them, Lord, all the wisdom that they need, Lord, to get through this situation, oh Lord, and to lead the people properly, Lord, with care and love and, and true sacrifice and dedication. We also thank you, Lord, for the marvellous people in the NHS service, the doctors, the nurses, the support staff, the drivers, the cleaners, the people, Lord, that suddenly we realise are the most valued in society. Even some of the shopkeepers, oh God, and some of the, the drivers who supply our supermarkets and people, oh God, who, who we would never have thought of thanking you for before, but we do so today. Thank you so much for all of those people. Lord, will you just be gracious, oh God, we pray, to all of these people, Lord, wherever they are, Lord, we thank you for them. Lord, will you strengthen them, strengthen the, 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 the desire even for you lord in this time in this dark moment and dark time in which we live we thank you father for resurrection life lord let your goodness and let your mercy and let your grace be forever upon us father we also pray for those friends of ours family people that we know lord who have suffered in this horrible thing for father i particularly want to remember um, edwin's wife Lorna, Lord, Pastor Redwin died uh, just this week, Lord, and uh, Father, we just remember the family, oh God, at this time, and thank you, Lord, for your servant, and thank you for people like him, oh God, who have made a difference in this world already. Father, will you just keep us safe, keep our families safe, we pray in Jesus' name. We pray it in the wonderful name of Jesus. We know, oh God, that that we will have tribulation, we will have difficulty and adversity in this life. But Father, we are just trusting in you and trusting your name. Pray for our 
Christian leaders as well, Lord. And we just pray that our leaders in different denominations and different networks of churches will lead with dedication and, and true sacrifice, oh God, and with compassion and with wisdom, uh, not being bosses, Lord, but being people who are who are moved by compassion, who are moved with wisdom and, and, and discretion. Father, uh, help us to be people of valour, help us to be people of wisdom, help us to be people, oh God, who are able to continue to praise your name through this. We will come through it. And I believe, oh God, for a lockdown harvest, we might not see it now in the, in the visible, but Lord, we will see it come to pass in Jesus' wonderful name. God bless you. The Lord keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you.
and your children and the children and the children may his favor be upon you in a thousand generations and your family and your children and the children and the children may his presence go before you and behind you and beside you all around you and within you he is with you he is with you in the morning in the evening in your coming and your going in your weeping and rejoicing he is for you 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 morning and welcome to the lighthouse thank you for joining with us on our online service we are so grateful that you would take the time to be here i want to give a special welcome to those who are tuning in for the very first time and uh, even though maybe this is not the way we thought we'd be celebrating easter i want to say today i am so excited today is the day that we get to celebrate Easter. The message of the cross is that Jesus died for our sins, but he just didn't stay in the grave. He rose again on the third day, and because of him, we have resurrection power. That is something so beautiful. What a great thing to celebrate, and I pray we would never take that for granted. Why don't you just, wherever you are as you're watching this, just take a moment to, to thank God. Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for the sacrifice. And through your blood, we have resurrection power. Amen and amen. Well, I'm excited to preach this message this morning for you. And I, I want to read from Luke chapter 17. So if you have your Bibles, you can turn with me to Luke chapter 17. Luke chapter 17, verses 11 to 19. Luke chapter 17, verses 11 to 19. And it says, On the way to Jerusalem, he was passing along between Samaria and Galilee. And as he entered a village, he was met by 10 lepers who stood at a distance and they lifted up their voices saying, Jesus, master, have mercy on us. 
When he saw that he said that to them, he said to them, go and show yourselves to the priests. And as they went, they were cleansed. Then one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back, praising God with a loud voice, and he fell on his face at Jesus' feet, giving him thanks. Now he was a Samaritan. Then Jesus answered, were not ten cleansed? Where are the nine? Was no one found to return and give praise to God except this foreigner? And he said to them, rise and go your way. Your faith has made you well. I think I like the King James Version because it says, rise and go your way. Your faith has made you whole. This morning, I want to speak on the title, what's got a hold on you? What's got a hold on you? I think most of us would admit that during this season, there are some things that have a hold on us. Uh, maybe during this, this time that we're facing this epidemic, there is some fear that has a hold of you. Maybe some anxiety, maybe some doubt or worry. The situations facing our jobs, our health and our finances have a hold on us and we're not sure what to do. When I was younger, uh, I would often go to swimming classes with my sister, Rachel. My mom would take us swimming and, and we'd do these lessons. And after the lesson, there'd be some free time to go and swim. And uh, this day was just like every other day. And I remember we were swimming and after our lessons, we had some free time. And so we were just uh, going about just swimming. And I noticed Rachel was going on in the deep end and she was getting deeper and deeper. And, and I was keeping an eye at her. And all of a sudden it looked like she was drowning. I looked around for the lifeguards, but I couldn't see any. And so I started to get a little bit worried. And as the good older brother that I am, I jumped into the pool to try and go save her. Now, I didn't really know what I was doing and I wasn't really that strong. So I tried to put her on my back. But as I put her on my back, we both started to drown. She was uh, grabbing a hold of my head. And because she was trying to grab some, get some air, she would push my head down. And I would try to be breathing and get some air. But my head was going down. And finally, somehow, we, we made it to the edge of the pool and all of a sudden then at that moment the lifeguard decided to turn up and I remember the lifeguard said that was stupid because when someone is drowning you don't want to try to put them on your back because they could get a hold of your head and potentially even drown you. I never forgot that incident. I mean I never let Rachel forget that incident but I wonder how many of us this morning feel like there are some things that have a hold of us and now we feel like we are drowning. I want to ask you, what's got a hold on you? Luke chapter 17 tells us of a story of 10 lepers. 10 lepers who are dealing with this condition of leprosy. It is so bad that they are now uh, social pariahs. No one wants to go near them. And so when they see that Jesus is passing, they, they cry out to him in hopes that they could get healed. You see, Jesus was passing by, but he was actually trying to go to Jerusalem. Jesus was passing by Samaria and Galilee, and he was actually trying to go to Jerusalem. He wasn't planning on stopping by this village. This wasn't his plan. Yet when the 10 lepers see him, they interrupt his plan in hopes that they would get healed. And I want to start off by saying, often it is in the interruptions of life that God reveals his intentions. Can I say that again? Uh, often it is in the interruptions of life that God reveals his intentions. It is when we are going around with our business, when we are going on with our plans and there's an interruption that takes place, God uses that to show his plan to us. When I look in the Bible, I see times where there was many miracles that happened and it was birthed out of an interruption. It wasn't like it was planned yet. Jesus performed some of his greatest miracles when they came from an interruption because Jesus saw the interruption as an opportunity. But I don't know about you, but I don't always see my interruptions as an opportunity I kind of see them like an obstacle. I'm sure many of us are frustrated right now with the situation going around with coronavirus. We probably see this interruption more like an obstacle than an opportunity. Maybe an obstacle to our finances. 
an obstacle to our health, an obstacle to our job, an obstacle to our future plans. And if we're probably being honest, we can't wait to get back to what we've planned on doing. I mean, let's be real. Who, who actually likes interruptions? Like, I don't like interruptions. They ruin what I have planned. I'm someone who likes to stick to the structure and the order. This is what I planned. I know what's going to happen because I am in control. And I wonder, maybe the reason we don't like interruptions is because we're not in control. We, we don't know what's going to happen. But what if the interruptions we face is actually a window into what God is doing? It is a window into his plan. And maybe, just maybe, what if the interruptions that we face is an opportunity to give God control? Think about that for a second. Rather than be complaining about the obstacle, rather than seeing this, this interruption as an obstacle, it can be an opportunity to give God control and to say, God, I choose to see this interruption as an opportunity, not an obstacle. Jesus was, was passing by, but he was about to face an interruption. And I think Jesus had every reason to be upset with this interruption. Not only was it not planned, but this was gonna take place between Galilee and Samaria. Now there was tension between Galilee and Samaria. So you, you have to understand the context. I'm gonna give a bit of a, a history here, so bear with me, but I'm, I'm going somewhere with this. You see, Samaria was the capital of the Northern Kingdom of Israel. Now Jews hated Samaria because that's where Samaritans were from. And the reason for this is a while ago, the king of Assyria had taken captive of Samaria and its people. And he had removed the people and he filled the land with foreign inhabitants. These people had different traditions to Jews. These people had different customs. These people served different gods. And so when the king of Assyria brought back the original inhabitants, they started to dwell like everyone else. They started to serve the different gods. They started to follow the different traditions. And so Jews did not like Samaritans because they were seen as impure and unclean. And now now Jesus is passing through Galilee and Samaria. Now Jesus is passing through this tension and watch this. In order to get to Jerusalem, the place that everyone wants to go, Jesus was going to have to go through Samaria, the place that everyone wanted to avoid. Often it is in the interruptions of life that it leads us to places of tension, leads us to places that we would like to avoid. Maybe you're watching this and, and because of the situation that we're facing right now, it, this interruption has led you to a place of tension in your marriage, a place of tension in that relationship. It has caused you to, to face some issues, some challenges, some fights that you would prefer to avoid. Maybe for some, it's led us to places of tension in our finances. We're, we're having to deal with how do I spend my money wisely with, but also confronting my spending habits. Or maybe for some, it's, it's led us to, to confronting an issue with, with our mental health. We, we want to serve God. We want to have faith in him. But I just feel all this anxiety, this stress and doubt, and I don't know what to do. Right now, as you're watching this, maybe sitting on your couch, you are living with the tension of our current pandemic that is going on. And maybe, just maybe, you're, you're feeling the tension and you're thinking, I never chose to be in this season. I never chose to be here. This is not what, what I would choose to do. And if it was up to you, you would choose to go around this season. You would choose to skip over this season. But I want to let you know it is in the tension that God God brings a testimony. It is when we decide to go through it that God brings a testimony from it. Jesus was going to have to go through Samaria, the place of tension, but he wasn't coming out empty handed because on the other side, there was a miracle. On the other side, there was a testimony, but he just had to go through the place of tension. And I want to encourage someone who is watching this. You're feeling like a place of frustration because of the tension 
This interruption has caused you to come to a place of tension and you're thinking, God, I would prefer to go around it. But I want to let you know inside your tension is a testimony. We just have to be willing to see this interruption as an opportunity. And so maybe we could say a, a, a practical prayer we could say is, God, I may not have chosen to be in this season. And maybe, God, if it was me, I would choose to go around this season. I would choose to actually skip over this season. But since I'm in it, I might as well go through it. And if I'm going to go through it, I'm not coming out empty-handed. God, I choose to come through this season with something of a testimony. Jesus was passing through Galilee and Samaria and he sees 10 lepers. And the, the 10 lepers, they, they cry out to Jesus. Luke, he doesn't uh, give us an account of who they are. He doesn't even tell us their names. He only describes them by their condition. It, it would almost be like if, if Luke said, hey, there goes the adulterer. There goes the murderer. There goes the liar. There goes the thief. There goes that gossiper. It's funny how often we can, we can identify people by their mistakes, by their past. We can so easily judge people. Here were 10 lepers being described, being identified by their condition. And what was their condition? Their condition was one of leprosy. They had the condition of leprosy. Now, leprosy was just a terrible disease to have in those days. Leprosy was a disease that would just eat away at your nerves. It would eat away at your skin. It would even cause maybe a finger or a nose to fall off. In some cases, leprosy would even cause you to go blind. This was a painful disease that would slowly eat away at you. To make matters worse, uh, many believe that if you had this disease, it was because you were sinning. And so if you had leprosy, you were judged. People would look down on you. Actually, you were so frowned upon that if you had leprosy, you had to stay six feet away from anyone else. Talk about social distancing. Long before social distancing was ever a thing, those who had leprosy were practicing it. And it, it got so bad that if the wind was blowing and you had leprosy, you had to stay 150 feet away in case you would give it to someone else. Leopards were shunned from the rest of the world, shunned from their family, and they had to live in a community on their own. Due to their condition, they were now in isolation. Their condition that they were facing had such a hold on them, it was stopping them from moving forward. It was stopping them from, from living their lives. Even if they wanted to do things normally, even if they wanted to be with their families, they couldn't. This condition had such a grip on them, it affected everything that they did. And so when Jesus passes by, the verse says, they stood at a distance. They stood at a distance. Jesus, the healer, is walking by and rather than running up to him because of their condition, they stand at a distance. I want to ask you this morning, is there anything that is holding you back? Maybe you feel like you can relate to these men. Okay, maybe you don't have a condition like leprosy, but maybe there are some other things that are holding you back. Maybe you're watching this and, and you feel held back by hurt. You've been carrying bitterness. And now that bitterness has held you hostage to your pain. Or maybe there's some that, that, that you feel like you're, you're stuck with all these thoughts from your past mistakes. You, you, you can't get over it and now you're held hostage to what you did in the past. Maybe for some, you're, you're stuck in a cycle of sin. You're trying to get out. You want to break free, but you feel trapped. And now due to your condition, due to your mistakes, your sin, you are bound and you are held. And now it has been slowly eating away at you. And even if you wanted to move forward, you can't. And now you, you feel so distant from God. You don't even feel like you can come near him maybe like the 10 lepers, due to your condition, not only have you isolated yourself from others, but now you've isolated yourself from God. You feel so alone and ashamed. Your condition 
has held you back. But I want to let you know on this Sunday, on Easter Sunday, that there is good news. That the message of the gospel is that Jesus came to die for our sins so that we could be in relationship with him. That Jesus came to break down every barrier that sin tried to put up. You see, Colossians 2, verses 13 to 15 says, You who were dead in your sins and uncircumcision of flesh, God made alive together with him and having forgiven us of our sins by canceling the record of debt that stood against us with his legal demand. He set it aside by nailing it to the cross and he disarmed every ruler and authority, putting them to shame by triumphing over them in him. Colossians 2 says that Jesus, he set it aside by nailing it to the cross. That word set aside in Greek means what is rendered no longer in effect. He rendered it no longer in effect. You see, you have to understand that that we had a record of debt. There was a record of our wrongdoings with a legal demand. There was a demand for our life. Sin had a price that needed to pay. Sin demanded for a price on our life. and and I was due to pay for that price. I was due to die. I was due to be condemned because of what I did. But then Jesus stepped in. He paid the price and because of what Jesus did, he broke the curse of sin and death. He rendered it no longer in effect. And because of the blood that was shed, I can now have a relationship with him. I don't have to stand at a distance. I don't have to be ashamed because he took my shame. He took my guilt. He paid the price and because of what Jesus did, he rendered it finished. And on the cross, on his dying breath, he said, it is finished. But that's not it because on the third day, he rose again. And with him, we now have resurrection power and life. Come on, wherever you are, why don't you give him a praise? Let's take a 20 second praise break to give him the praise that he deserves. Because of what he did, we now have life in him. Sin has been rendered no longer in effect. The power of sin has been rendered no longer effect. He took our place. Death could not hold him. The veil tore before him. He silenced the boast of sin and shame. Come on, where's Sam Chanda when we need that song song, eh? Jesus took our price. He paid the price and rendered it no longer in effect. And so Jesus is is walking by and the lepers see him. And so they, they, they reach out to him. They cry out for mercy in hopes that they would get their healing. And Jesus, in response to their cry, he tells them, go show yourself to the priests. Go show yourself to the priests. I mean, I wonder what the lepers must have been thinking in that time. Because if I were them, I would have been like, ah, Jesus, that's not exactly the response that I was looking for. Jesus, I heard that you're a miracle working God. Could you not just heal me right now? Could you not just put your your hand on me and heal me? Jesus, what you're asking doesn't quite make sense. You see, there was a tradition and a custom for those who, who had leprosy. They would go show themselves to the priests. The priest, although couldn't heal them, he would be able to diagnose them. He was almost like a doctor. And the only reason for someone who had leprosy to go to a priest was because they were healed. And the priest would just confirm their healing. The only reason they would go is because they've already been healed. But in this exact moment, the lepers still have the disease. At this exact moment, they're not healed. So why would they go show themselves to the priest? Jesus, that doesn't make any sense. Wouldn't it be easier if you just healed them now and then they could go to the priest? Wouldn't it make sense if you did it in that order? And I think some of us do that with God. We say, God, if you, if you would just give me the answer, if you would just show me the miracle, then I'll respond. Jesus, just, just show me that answer and then I will respond. I'll do what you want to do. I'll follow you, follow you, but you first show me. But God wants to know, will you respond even when you don't know the answers? Will you obey my command even when it doesn't add up, in this time of uncertainty, in this time of confusion, 
Will you obey even when you don't have all the answers? Will you continue to give even if you don't know if you have enough for yourself? Will you continue to worship even when you feel sick? Will you obey even when it doesn't add up? Faith is taking the step of obedience to say, God, I choose to obey even when it doesn't make sense. Even when it doesn't go the way I wanted. Even when it doesn't go in the order that I had planned. God, I choose to obey. The 10 lepers, they, they choose to obey and they, they take a step of faith. And it says, as they went their way, as they were walking to the temple, as they took a step of faith and obeyed, it says they were healed. Not, not before. It was they weren't healed and then they went to the temple. No, it was as they took a step of faith, then they were healed. Why? Because faith has a different order. The order of faith is that when I obey, he responds. When I obey, he responds. I wonder how many of us this morning, God is calling us to take a step of faith, to obey, and, but we're struggling because we just don't get the order of what he's asking us to do. Maybe for us, it's obeying in a, in a relationship, obeying with our finances. Maybe for some, you're watching this, you've never given your life to Christ. God is asking you, you feel the urge to surrender your life, but you just don't feel you can do it because it just doesn't make sense. But I want to encourage you, the order of faith is that when I obey, he responds. It was when the lepers obeyed that God responded. He gave them their healing. They received their miracle. And watch this, the miracle is actually meant to show us the bigger picture. The miracle is actually meant to show us what it's really all about. You see, uh, when the lepers, the, the lepers, they got their, their healing and they responded, they, they were then healed. But one man, the man that was a Samaritan came back to worship Jesus. Nine of them went back their way, but there was one man. And, and this one man, because he was a Samaritan, he was hated by Jews. Maybe he could have been thinking, if I go back to Jesus, maybe will he, will he judge me? Maybe will he take away the healing? I don't know. It was a risk. This man risked it all, but this man wanted to worship the one who deserved all the praise. This man wanted to give praise to the Lord of Lords. After receiving his miracle, this man went back to Jesus because he realized the bigger picture. His eyes were open to see who Jesus really was. Jesus wasn't just a miracle worker, but he was his savior. And maybe this morning you've been asking God for a miracle. You've been saying, God, would you just do that thing? Maybe in isolation, you'd be like, God, would you just help me with those finances? Help me with that relationship. Help me with that specific situation. God, I need a miracle. But I wonder how many of us, when we receive our miracle, we go back to our, our old way. We don't know for sure, but I wonder when those nine lepers received their healing, did they just go back to their old way? Some of us, when we get our miracle, we go back to the old way because we miss the point of the miracle. But Jesus came not just to heal, but he came to reveal who he really is. The point of the miracle was meant to show us who he really is to us. And what if during this time of isolation, God wants to reveal who he really is? really is to you. You've been asking for a miracle, but God wants to show you I'm more than just a miracle. I am your provider. I am your source. I am your strength. I am your joy. I am your peace. I am your everything. I am the one who I can trust. That's why in Psalms it says, I look up to the mountains. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the maker and creator of heaven and earth. Jesus is my help. He is my source. He is my strength. He is the one I can trust. He is the, my everything. And so I'm going to give him praise. That's why on this Easter Sunday, we decide to give him praise because of everything that he did. We have no other response. No other response could do but to say, Jesus, because you've given everything, not just of what you've done, but because of who you are, we give you praise. We give him praise because when we see him, when we recognize him, everything changes. 
This morning, God wants to reveal to you who he really is. On Easter Sunday, the day of resurrection, the day that changed the course of history, today, God wants to change something in your life. And I think this man, he understood it. This Samaritan man, he got it. When, when he received his miracle, his eyes were open and, and he understood. He realized who Jesus really was. And so he went to praise. I think he, he probably understood. He realized, man, Jesus is not just my miracle worker. He's my savior. And so no, there is no other response that I could do than to praise him. And so uh, this Samaritan man goes back to praise. And as he praises, he is restored. Why? because restoration begins with my response. It is as I respond that God restores. Jesus says to this man, your faith has made you well. I prefer the King James version because it says your faith has made you whole. You see, Jesus didn't say this to the other lepers. He only said it to this man. When this man came back and praised, when this man understood who Jesus was, Jesus said to him, your faith has made you whole. You see, for the other lepers, they were healed. They were healed of the disease of leprosy. Leprosy that had been eating away at them, they were healed, but the effects of leprosy were still there. You remember, you gotta remember, leprosy was a disease that would eat away at you. Maybe some fingers would have fallen off. Maybe some noses would have been fallen off. There was the effects, but for the man, Jesus said to him, the man who understood it, Jesus said to him, your faith has made you whole. That means whatever the leprosy had eaten, in a way at him. Whatever the leprosy had taken from his life, it was restored. And this is the message of the gospel, that Jesus came not just to heal, but he came to make us whole. And that whatever the enemy stole, Jesus came to restore. That Jesus came not just to save us and redeem us from our sins, but he came to restore us into life. He came to restore us into purpose. He came to restore us into freedom. The enemy may have come to steal, kill, and destroy but Jesus came to give life and so whatever is binding me can't have a hold on me that whatever is trying to grab me can't have a hold on me because Jesus made me whole he rendered and canceled the effects of sin he made it nullified and because of Jesus I am made whole I want to say to you this morning as you're watching it you are made whole because of what Jesus did you are made whole, that when you respond, he restores. There's some of you, you've been going with some things in life that have been eating away at you. That sin has robbed your joy. The fight in the marriages has robbed your peace. And God says, I don't just want to stop the fighting. I want to restore your marriage. I want to make your marriage whole. I don't just want to stop that sin so that it won't be bugging you anymore. No, I want to restore you into purpose. Jesus said, I came to make you whole. The message of the gospel is that through Jesus, we are made whole whole. And so I want to give an opportunity as you're watching this. Maybe you're watching this and you've never given your life to Jesus. You've, you've watched streams before. Maybe you've even been to a church, but you never made that commitment. This Sunday on Easter Sunday, why don't you decide to say, Jesus, I give you my life. I decide to give you and surrender my life. I accept that you are my savior. You died for my sins. I believe that you are the son of God. And on the third day, you rose again. And in you, I live for because you have made me whole. Thank you for joining with us. I pray that as you leave this week, as we ponder what God has done for us, we'll remember Jesus came not just to heal us. He came to make us whole.
surround me with a song of deliverance. You're giving me a song of deliverance from my enemies till all my fears are gone. Yeah. I'm no longer. I'm no longer My mother's world. Yeah, let's sing this character. You have chosen me. Let's sing it with confidence. God. Love has called my name. I've been born again. I've been born again. Into your family. Your blood flows through my veins. Let's sing that again. From my mother's world. From my mother's world. You have chosen me. You've chosen me, you've chosen me Love has told my name I've been born again, I've been born again To your lovely family Your blood, your love rose through my I'm no longer, I'm no longer
service and you were really blessed by the word and we just want to encourage you especially if you're tuning in for the first time to follow us on all our social media platforms and get plugged in to all our C groups and our M groups it doesn't matter where you are whatever your location is you can get plugged in so for all of that go check us out on our Instagram on our Facebook or our Twitter or go into our website at www.lighthousecc.co.uk otherwise have a